Ukrainian officials are asking the United States to allow them to use long-range ATACMS to hit airfields that Russia uses to launch retaliatory attacks, which Kiev believes would allow it to hold on to part of the Kursk region. It will give them the leverage they need to negotiate with Russia. That's what it's all about, a Zelensky advisor told the Washington Post on condition of anonymity. He also said Ukraine had deployed a significant number of troops and that they had captured about 100 square kilometers of enemy territory. In three days, according to Zelensky's advisor, Ukrainian troops had advanced past cities of thousands, taken hundreds of prisoners and seized a gas metering station that Russia uses for energy transactions with Hungary and Slovakia. According to Zelensky's advisor, Ukraine now controls a gas metering station located about five kilometers from the border with Russia. But gas was still flowing through Sudza, the last operational loading point on the pipeline that carries Russian natural gas to Europe via Ukraine. According to the advisor, the station is unlikely to be used as leverage because the pipeline passes through Ukraine anyway and Kiev could shut off the flows at any time, the newspaper writes. The Ukrainian offensive has been more successful than even many officials in Kyiv expected, it has been noted. While the precise purpose of the operation is unclear, analysts say that in addition to potentially diverting Russian troops from the eastern Donetsk region, Ukraine may be trying to gain leverage in future negotiations. Ukrainian forces have clearly advanced quite far into the Kursk region, but how much territory they control or actually intend to control remains unknown said Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Whatever the reason, the Kursk offensive has put new pressure on Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, as ordinary Russians have been forced to evacuate the region where they have faced the same types of shelling that have plagued Ukrainian civilians for more than two years. In the Houthi-held Hodeida region, Governor Mohammed Kahim told the rebels Almasira TV that 30 people died and 5 were missing in the floods, adding that more than 500 people had been displaced. He added that a number of homes were destroyed and more than 7 cars were swept away. Hodeida, the southwestern city of Taiz, and the northwestern city of Haja were all hit hard by floods this week during Yemen's ongoing seasonal rainfall that caused flooding that swept away poorly built homes. UN humanitarian agency OCHA said the flooding in Taiz had affected 10,000 people and resulted in 80 wells being buried, farmlands being washed away and homes damaged, citing access difficulties and a shortage of funding for aid agencies. Local authorities still haven't reached areas severely affected by the floods for two days, leaving some residents trapped inside their homes, according to witnesses who spoke with the Associated Press. Mahdi al Mashid Chairman of the Supreme Political Council, ordered local authorities to respond to damaged areas, according to Masaira TV, which reported that floods caused major damages to properties, lands, and roads, in Hodeida. Witnesses described the scene in the Yemeni Tehama coastal plain as horrifying. Mohammed Rassam said some livestock were found dead after drowning in the mud due to the floods. Food supplies and drinkable water were also lost. The flood swept away everything, he said. Some residents were stranded inside their homes in Tehama, a region that is part of Hodeida. Others were able to leave and headed to Hodeida City. Many of the houses in Tehama, where malnutrition has been reported, are made of brick and materials that can be easily ruined by rain. I'm good. Yeah, that was.